Wow. Wow. <laughs> what a game. I mean... <laughs> what, what a Super Bowl. That was amazing. Uh, I mean... You, you know what? Well, let's just calmly... I had to write this down because this is a football game. This is my first time. So, let's go over the incredibleness that was New England versus Atlanta for Super Bowl 51. Okay, so, starts out first quarter, two teams feeling each other out. Atlanta dominating defensively and offensively. They just haven't been able to get any points. Second quarter comes around. Atlanta catches a break. LeGarrette Blunt fumbles. Atlanta drives down, recovers, and drives down the field. Ending with a Devontae Freeman rushing touchdown. They, they, no way you're stopping that blocking scheme. 7-0 Atlanta. Then, later on in the second quarter, Austin Hooper or catches a great pass from Matt Ryan. 14-0 Atlanta on that touchdown. And then Tom Brady made a horrible decision to throw the football. Robert Alford picks him off, runs it back 82 yards for an Atlanta touchdown, and it's 21 to nothing before halftime. Oh, but of course the Patriots drive down and kick a field goal. Whatever. Nobody thought anything of it. I didn't think anything of it. I was, I was fully expecting Atlanta to run away with this, and I said this. This can very quickly become a route. And starting in the third quarter, that looked like it was going to be the case. Because Atlanta gets the ball, New England stops them. New England gets the ball, looks like they have momentum, then screw themselves over and don't get any points. Punt the ball, and then Atlanta drives all the way down the field, ending with a Tevin Coleman touchdown out of a screen. 28-3 Atlanta. And at that point, you're thinking, okay, Atlanta's got this wrapped up. It is a route, and they're going to blow the Patriots off the field. And then Tom Brady shows all of us, including me, why he truly is the GOAT. The greatest of all time. Because this New England team, you gotta give them one thing. They never quit in the Super Bowl. Never. They didn't quit against Seattle. They didn't quit here. But here's the thing. They were down by... 10 against Seattle heading into the fourth quarter. They were down by 25 halfway through the third. Yes, you have the entire fourth quarter, but they took forever on their drive at the end of the third, which eventually did end in a James White touchdown reception from Tom Brady. Okay then. All right, New England, you, you've made it somewhat interesting. Oh, and then Steven Goskowski missed the extra point. So instead of a 18-point game, it is a 19-point game, and that would prove to be significant. I'll get to that later. So fourth quarter starts out. New England drives down, kicks a field goal. Okay, whatever. Now it's a 16-point game, technically a two-score game, but you need two touchdowns and two extra points. What proceeded from then on out was the greatest comeback of all time in Super Bowl history. Actually, no, in NFL history, at least for... Not maybe the biggest of margins, but for the biggest margin on the biggest stage. Danny Amendola begins it with a touchdown pass reception from Tom Brady. And then they run a little trick play with a direct snap to James White, who runs it in for the two-point conversion. Alright, we have a ball game. It's Now it's suddenly gone from... 28 to 3 to 28 to 20. We've got a ball game here. And then Atlanta proceeds to do a disservice to Julio Jones because Matt Ryan was very well sacked on the play. You know which play I'm talking about. And somehow, some way, Matt Ryan not only got away from the pressure but threw it up and he didn't, and you can see on the field. Julio Jones was nowhere near open. He was not open. Not even close. And the ball was way overthrown too. And Julio Jones goes up, makes the grab, comes down with it, gets both feet in bounds somehow, and maintains possession. That's a 27-yard completion. 
which suddenly sets Atlanta into field goal range, and a field goal at that moment in the game would have ended it. Because Atlanta, even if they gave up a touchdown to Tom Brady and the Patriots, ultimately still, even with a two-point conversion, would have had a three-point lead. And at that point, the game is over. There's nothing the Pats can do. They'll run out of time. Even with an onside kick, you'd, they'd have to throw a Hail Mary, and those almost never work in the Super Bowl. It hasn't worked in the Super Bowl. <sighs> But then we proceed to get a very controversial moment in the game in which Dan Quinn, the Atlanta Falcons head coach, proceeds to hand the ball off to Devontae Freeman because Tevin Coleman is hurt. So Devontae Freeman runs wide. Don't really agree with that. They get negative one yard, but it's okay. They're still in field goal range. But then Dan Quinn decides to call a pass play. Why? You're already in field goal range. A field goal is massive. It would win you the game. Why are you throwing the football? And sure enough, Matt Ryan gets sacked on the play. So now, they're suddenly back to out of field goal range, and then on the next play... Oh, and on the next play, like, they took a holding penalty! So now it's third and 30. Third and 30. And of course, the next play goes for almost nothing. And in fact, I think it went for nothing at all. And ultimately, they have to punt the ball to Brady with enough time to drive down and tie the game. And what happened next? Julian Edelman, the, you know the catch I'm talking about. Tom Brady throws it into a crowd. It gets knocked up in the air. First of all, that ball should have been intercepted. And if that ball's intercepted, I guarantee you Atlanta runs the clock out. I guarantee you Atlanta, Atlanta runs the clock out if they freaking make that interception. But no, instead, bounces in the air. It's about to hit the turf. Goes off the Falcons' leg and into the hands of Julian Edelman who makes the catch with about that much space between the ball and the turf. When I first saw that happen, I'm like, there's no way in hell he came down with that. But you look at the replay, and he did! He came down with it! And I'm like, oh my god, that's better than David Tyree. That is. I don't care what anybody says, that's better than David Tyree. And sure enough, sets up James White on a rushing play. Yeah, you're going to hear his name one more time. His second touchdown of the game is first running. And then on the two-point conversion, throw it to Danny Amendola, who just gets in the end zone. Two-point conversion, tie game. And then Atlanta, with 50 seconds left, can't do anything. The Patriots get the ball back. They decide to take a knee. We go to the first overtime in Super Bowl history, and I don't even need the paper. And what proceeded was the coin toss, which the Patriots won, opted to take the ball, of course, and Brady proceeded to drive them down the field. And a lot of people will say that the pass interference at the end of the game was a knick-knack foul, or it wasn't a knick-knack foul, but it was a baby foul. It's overtime in the Super Bowl. You can't call that. You'd be crying if it was anybody but the Patriots. You would be crying if that was your team and they didn't call that. So I don't want to hear it. That's a pass interference. That's legit. I mean, he never the defender never looks back to make a play on the ball. He just makes a play on the body. You can't do that. <laughs> and here's the thing. Amendola, or it may have not have been Amendola, but the Patriot player nearly came up with a catch anyway to win the game. It wouldn't have mattered, but he dropped the ball, pass interference, and now it's first and goal at the two. And then, Bill Belichick nearly makes the same mistake that Pete Carroll did against him two Super Bowls ago in Super Bowl 49. They decide to throw the ball, but rather than a crossing pattern, they decided to throw a fade, and Dwight Freeney, or 
I think it was Dwight Freeney. Dwight Freeney had a chance to intercept the ball. And if he did that, the entire roof would have blown off. Because now all the Falcons needed was a field goal. But nope, Freeney can't make the play. It ends up hitting the turf, a risky play. Belichick knows he can't chance that again. Instead, decides to do a pitch play to James White. And James White was tackled at the three-yard line. They had him at the three. Actually, it may have been the four. But James White refused to go down. Fights his way through three Falcons. Dives for the goal line. Gets it in. Touchdown. Game winner. In overtime. Patriots win. Oh my god, what a Super Bowl. What a Super Bowl. That was amazing. That completely makes up for the atrocity that was Super Bowl 50 and is actually, in my opinion, better than Super Bowl 49, which I thought up until this point was the greatest Super Bowl of over, of all time. Giants fans be like, Super Bowl 42. But I... I'm not a Patriots fan. Let me get that out of the way right now. I am not a Patriots fan. I'm not a Falcons fan. I'm a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. I haven't hadn't I haven't gotten to watch my I team play a Super Bowl yet. I was too young to watch them when they did win it. So I wanted to I was rooting for Atlanta. I'll admit, you can watch the last video for evidence of that. I was rooting for Atlanta. I'll admit, I wanted one of two things from this game. I either wanted Atlanta to win or I wanted a really good game. I got one of them, and I got one hell of a Super Bowl, as everybody else in America did. A lot of Falcons fans are heartbroken, and to be completely honest, I don't feel bad for you in the slightest. Ha! You suck! <laughs> Matty Ice! Yeah, now I know why they call him Matty Ice. He goes ice cold when they need him most. <laughs> the, okay, okay. Now that I've got my Buccaneer fan out of me, I just want to say, damn, that close. You had the game won, Falcons. You had a Super Bowl. You had it. But you were unable to score any points in the fourth quarter. The New England Patriots outscored you 19 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Oh, and remember when it was 28 to 3? They not only came back from a 25 point deficit, but they scored. 31 unanswered points. You cannot do that and win a Super Bowl. Atlanta did not deserve to win this game for how they played in the second half. They didn't. New England, on the other hand, deserves all the credit in the world for completing the greatest comeback in Super Bowl history and by a wide margin. The largest deficit that any team had ever overcome to win a Super Bowl was 10 points. The New England Patriots did that in Super Bowl 49. But here, they were down by 25, came back, got it to overtime, and won. I couldn't ask for anything more. So congratulations to Tom Brady on your fifth Super Bowl. Congratulations to the New England Patriots for winning their fifth Super Bowl in franchise history. And to the Atlanta Falcons, you've got a young team. You've got an MVP quarterback. You've got a head coach who is going to help this defense recover from this loss. You've got a team that I'm going to be very scared when my team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, face you guys twice in the next regular season. But you guys in Atlanta, don't panic. You've got a team locked in and ready to go for another run. As long as you don't get incredibly injury riddled, you are going to be golden. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. And how about that Super Bowl? That was incredible. In fact, I'm going to go as far as to say, easily. I've watched 10 Super Bowls in my life. That was not only the greatest Super Bowl I've ever watched, but that was the greatest Super Bowl of all time. Take care, everybody.